Hello everybody, welcome to GT Planet and welcome to another video where I, Chaz Draycott, try to take on some of the well-known difficult races in Gran Turismo 7. I struggled with this one previously, which is the Group 1 Prototype Series race at Suzuka, after also doing the race at Daytona. We did that in this video and it was really good fun actually. A great, great race, very entertaining, but again, very difficult. Now some people in the comments have said, you know, these races aren't so hard and it all depends on personal ability and preference, you know, these things can change quite a lot from person to person and even, in this race especially, the weather, which can change quite a lot. Now, some of you, the eagle-eyed of you, would have noticed so far, you won't believe what happened this morning. I jumped on the PlayStation, I've not played for about two weeks since doing other projects and working on other things, and I jumped in just using a controller instead of my wheel, and I thought I'll get back into the rhythm of the car, you know, prepare for the video so it's not a complete mess when I start actually driving. We jumped in the LM55 VGT Group 1 from Mazda with the medium RPM turbocharger on it, and I won the race. <laughs> I won it. I jumped straight in this morning. There was no rain until I think halfway around lap 8, and it was really light rain, and it stayed that way till the very end, so I was on... Hard tyres for six laps and then uh, mediums for the last four. And I just drove past everybody. We had it on, uh, I think, fuel set in four, so it was on quite a lean uh, setup. Or would it be the other way? I can't remember. Either way, I won the race on a controller, and obviously I want to do this for the sake of the video and show you guys that it is possible and, you know, <laughs> try and do it on a wheel. That's the real target for me, is to do it on a wheel, because it's so much more difficult on a wheel. Sure, you can be more accurate and more sort of precise with your inputs because it's, you know, such a larger axis compared to just that. I just reckon it is definitely doable for me, especially, because we all know by now I'm not the best driver on Gran Turismo 7. So we've got this different car as to compared to what we used last time anyway. We're going to start the race on the hards and we're going to go to mediums later on. We're just going to pit when the rain comes and when the weather is difficult enough because I think I can drive around it and from what we've seen before, the AI aren't phenomenal in the wet either. So we should be all right to get on with this with just hards and mediums, but we'll see. I do have inters available for this car. So without further ado, let's jump in, shall we? Another thing I noticed in the previous race that I just did this morning on the controller that I won, have I mentioned that I won it? Flew by. It went by very, very quickly. Let's just make sure that we have everything as it is. So we're on racing hards, downforces as is, medium RPM turbocharger, 987 horsepower. We're not going to be using all of that, of course, because we're going to have it on fuel setting four for this race. That's the first thing I'm going to do down here. Get it on a lean setup, get the weather radar up, and let's go, shall we? Now, what I've found in the attempts that I've done is that while I'm just getting up to speed, I don't even tend to overtake Ordonez until maybe the hairpin on the first lap. So early progress isn't something that you need to really worry about, to be fair, in this race. The AI all sort of bunch up and slow each other down bit by bit. I love the noise of this car, by the way. That famous Mazda rotary engine screaming away to some... 18, 19,000 RPM. Great turbo flutter noises as well from this car. I'm just keeping an eye on my gears because that's something that I was very inconsistent with in the previous run throughs that I've done. But you see what I mean? We're only just getting the run on Ordonez now into the hairpin. And yeah, that's pretty much exactly the same as what I did last time. I understeered into him. <laughs> and off we go. Once you get into fourth gear though, this car, even on fuel setting number four, engine mode four, let's call it, it is still an absolute rocket ship. I've noticed a few, hello, times the AI have been having spins on this corner. We saw it in the original run through that I did. Just this morning they did it as well. There was two of them as well. In Estrosa, we've just overtaken did it, and the, who is it, Lopez, Coque Lopez in the blue car there that we've just smashed into did it. That was, Shoddy by me, I shouldn't have gone for that really. Okay, end of lap one, slipstreaming our way past Lopez and Kawakami as well. Normally, I wouldn't Kawakami, no, I wouldn't overtake Kawakami until sort of a third of the way around lap two, so that's at least interesting progress for now. Felt very understeery there actually on the exit of turn one. There's always this interesting queue of cars on lap two as well actually that you tend to find. We have to sort of power our way around some of them and then be really careful as the whole queue checks up into these corners here, into the Degners. Go down the inside of the 787B, making just as good a noise as us. 
Car feels great though. Feels really stiff on the front end, but it's one of those things where at the top end, with all the downforce that it's got, it is an absolute rocket. It just glues to the road. I mean, look at the way it gets out of corners. Even in engine mode four, it just disappears. Okay, checking the weather radar. Oh, no, it's that one. Nothing on the horizon just yet. It tends to be about three laps before you get rain, if you get it. Whoa. Maybe not enough steering lock for a sec there, Chaz. Oh, again, shoddy. Yeah, I deserved that. You know what? Hats off. Although he's pitting. Why? Oh, he's on softs. In a front-wheel drive, 1,200 horsepower Nissan. Ouch. As you see, though, it is going dark. It is going much more cloudy. And the weather is threatening. I love this car. <laughs> Simple as that, I love this car. I've not got anything other constructive to say about it at this moment in time, other than I just love it. The noise, the drama of it, the speed of the thing. Not amazing on the brakes, or is that just me? But up through the gears, it's just a joy. Still nothing on the weather radar, so we're looking all right. Again, I've realized as well, uh, someone called it the Senna technique, where you're halfway around a corner and you blip the throttle, and it sort of just lights up what the car is doing and helps tip the nose in. You can really do a lot of that on Gran Turismo 7. <laughs> Sorry, I'll have bleeped that out. <laughs> Scared the life out of me. He's gone in the pits now as well. He was on softs. Tires are looking good. Fuel is just above half, and there's nothing on the weather radar just yet. You've got to be ready for it to spike the revs out of the hairpin there. You have to be ready on that right paddle, everybody. Ooh, that was a little bit shaky into there. It didn't want to slow down then. I've learned my lesson now. I'm going to the left of them into the chicane. Got a couple of cars in front of us all the way up to second place. Oh, I see rain on the red uh, the, the, on the weather radar. And there's wow, patchy rain. Oh dear, there's some heavy patches in there. But it's coming from the other direction this time. That's quite interesting. Okay, but we're right with the race leaders now, so that is good. We can use them as a yardstick now. We're at the halfway point of the race on this lap, so yeah, making good progress, I'd say. Just need to manage whatever the car's going to do when that weather comes. We've still got a bit of time, I think. We'll probably have another lap. Ooh, I'm not sure, actually. It's progressing quite quickly, isn't it? Should get the lead here, if I'm careful. Oh, I'm sorry, Miyazono. Whoa, that's that. Right, okay. Race lead. However, there's going to be a very heavy downpour. Do you see that green patch there? That is going to absolutely cane us by the look of it. So we may have to go straight onto Inters here. I may have to pit, actually, at the end of this lap instead of lap six like I did this morning. Oh, dear. I was a bit too confident into there that time. Yep, yeah, look at the standing water already building up in that bottom left corner. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. I'm going to be very careful through here just for the sake of it. And the rain is not the rain. I can't speak English now. See the fluster already. Look at that. I've absolutely bottled it. Right, we're going to go straight into Inters, everybody. All do we? Oh, no. I'm going to do it. All right, we're going to go on to those Inters. And we're going to fuel it up all the way. We may as well, just in case we need to dial it down to engine mode 3 and use a bit more fuel, or even 2 or 1, may as well have the extra fuel in the tank. I'm nervous now. I'm scared. I've pitted a bit early. You see that little diamond? That's what I was referring to. That basically is the amount of fuel on your current sort of run that you would need to make it to the end, based on what you've used so far. Okay. Inters. Are they the way? Well, we'll find out. Don't want to go on the curbs. Oh, God. Yeah, look, these guys are having to crawl. Because I think they're still on slicks. It'd be great if we didn't smack into them every corner, wouldn't it? Maybe we've made the right call. Ah, that's not a good moment, though, Chaz. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, that's a lot of valuable time. The side bishop behind as well. I can hear him close in. Yeah, look at this. They're absolutely crawling through. Oh, come on. <laughs> Listen to that thing revving. Go on. Wheel spinning like mad in the 787B. I'm so scared of Spoon Curve. 
Okay, there's a lot more heavy patches of rain coming. So I think we've made the right choice here. We're only on lap 6 out of 10, though. There's plenty of time left in this race, but look, they're struggling. They are struggling. This is good. Just don't want to get held up behind them when they're crawling. Look at that. Everyone's in on mediums and hards. And we're the first one on inters, and we're going to go straight past them. Come on. There we go. Into the race lead, everybody. Nice. I think Jonathan Wong just came out just behind us there on inters. He sort of blipped in front of us on the timing tower for just a second. Ooh, big bucket load of understeer there into the hairpin. I keep forgetting that while these tyres are suited to these conditions, you still actually have to go slower. Like, come on, Chaz. We're opening up a good gap over Wong now as well. We've gained about a second and a half on him over the course of this lap so far. More than that now that we're at full whack. Going to run on that wet line on the right-hand side of the circuit, see if that helps the tyres. There's a lot of water out there. You can see the difference on the little graph in the bottom left as we go from the right-hand side of the circuit to the left. Really drops down the amount of water that's there. Six seconds ahead of Wong now, wow. Really gained a lot of time on him. Now the rain is going to stop soon. That scares me, look. However, I think the circuit oh, is going to remain wet in most places for quite a while now, so should be all right. I don't want to shred these tyres too much because they're lasting really well at the moment. Obviously, one of my main mistakes in the previous video was that I went onto full wets instead of inters, and I just absolutely shredded them. Now, there's another rainbow of... Uh, I don't know, actually. It's not a very thick section of weather afterwards. Oh, I tried to change my thing halfway around the airpin. Tried to change the uh, range on the weather radar and just ended up having my hand in a stupid position on the wheel. Yeah, there's only another slither of rain coming, so... This might still not go to plan. The amount of water on the circuit is going down on the racing line, so we might have to do some sort of manual care of these tyres here and go on the wet line a little bit to look after them. We've opened up a solid gap over Wong, though, so hopefully we can hold that. We've got two laps to go. We get on that wet line. Look at that. There's loads of water out here. Ooh, a little bit wide there. Yeah, it's really starting to wear down these tyres now, look. Circuit is getting dry. Uh-oh. I suppose this is another one of the challenges of the race, is the fact that it's not when the rain comes, but it's when the rain goes as well. You have to really be careful about it. I'm not sure these tyres are going to last another lap, you know. They're absolutely ruined. That front left has just had a torturous sector. I really, really don't want to pit. So we're going to go for another lap. Pray that the Inters hold on guide it onto the wet part of the circuit. Okay, one more lap, everyone. Half a tank of fuel. So we can probably change the engine mode down to about two. Get some more prod out of it. Oh, they're pitting with one lap to go. Just got to guide the car home. Just be gentle to her. I say gentle, and then I'm using 90 degrees of lock around the S's. Oh, God. Ooh. I didn't like that. We're 32 seconds clear. We can just guide it home. Yeah, the circuit is almost bone dry now in most places. Short shifting to make sure I don't spin up the rears. I'm sorry, front left. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's pretty much your job done now, front left. That's fine. You can go in a nice tyre blanket after this, I promise. Right, you front right. I've got one more job to do. Still 29 seconds clear, everybody. We're going to do it. Lovely. Thank you, front right. You have also done your job and earned yourself a nap. Round the chicane for the final time. The tyres are screaming for mercy. But we've done it, everyone. We've done it. It's there. Come on. Twice in one day. I'm happy with that. Did it on a controller. And now we've done it on a wheel. The trusty, trusty Thrustmaster TGT2. Excellent. Happy with that. Just shows you need the right car and the right strategy and the right weather, to be fair. We got lucky with that weather as well there, I think. While I got really lucky earlier with no rain at all until lap 8, 
that was also lucky because of the fact that it came so suddenly, really soaked the circuit, and it was at a time where we could choose to pit there and then, as opposed to sort of being halfway around a lap and really struggling. So there's the result, and 28 seconds clear of Jonathan Wong in the end, then ahead of Miyazono, Gallo, and Wilk for the top five. And that is a result of the advice that I've taken from the forums as well. You know, people told me to use the LM55 VGT. People in the YouTube comments as well. Thank you to all of you. Brilliant car for the job. Put the medium turbocharger on it. Get that engine mode down to four. Save yourself some fuel. And just be careful on the tyres and you'll get the job done. It's really good. That was with the AI on their difficult setting as well. Obviously not as difficult as Sophie AI as we've seen. But still, that's not a bad result at all. I'm very, very happy with that. And it's a good money prize as well. I don't know if that's a great way of putting it. 175 grand in the pot. Smashing. Well, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Really hope you enjoyed this video. It's great to be back once again. And we hope you're having a fantastic start to 2024. Thanks again. And I will see you in the next video here on GT Planet. Have a good day.